I had I had one of those weeks where uh, it was it was tough and and uh, uh, now I don't know I'm sure all of you mature believers you're all you're all in the clear you're all good with that but you know sometimes uh, I don't react right anybody ever not react to having a tough week not react not react well yeah okay. Anybody ever get a bad attitude? From the, I mean, it's a, okay, right, okay. I I think by I think I I think by uh, by Wednesday morning I was developing a major low front coming in off the coast or somewhere I don't know where. And by Wednesday evening I I had stepped into the bad attitude. By Thursday I was really working on that bad attitude to develop it. To, to mature that bad attitude, you know, you want to work that up. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to give it up too soon. So uh, it was, it was crazy. It was uh, Friday morning, early in the morning. I wish I could show this to everybody, but I didn't give it to my brother back there, so I can't. But Friday morning, I don't know what time. It must have been 05 dark 30 o'clock and, and and I was awake which is there's sin number one being awake at oh dark 530 but um, and uh, I uh, uh, went up to my favorite place to pray and uh, it was it was really astounding here, I'm going to do this so that none of you can see it, and you can all ask me about it later. How's that sound? Here we go. Hang on. Let's see if it'll turn. It turned. So there it was, you know. Another one of those days where you go, oh, Lord, I think you got the whole world in your hands. I think you're painting everything. I think you're, I think you're, uh, I think you're doing your thing, Lord, you know. And in, the, and in those moments, in those seconds, what happens is that um, one of the business things that I've been waiting on all week and it wasn't working out and I was sure it wasn't going to work out and I knew it wasn't working out and I was kicking myself forever thinking it was going to work out, you know. Because if you can kick yourself on top of a bad attitude, that's like, you know, that's like the whipped cream on top of a sundae. That's the good stuff right there you want to get to. So, uh, and, and all of a sudden, I'm, 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 I'm praying to the Lord. Okay, no, I'm sorry. I'm complaining to the Lord. And I, and I drive in, and I'm, I'm looking over the, over the gorge, and this am, amazing sunrise comes up. And I, I'm looking, and that thing that I thought was never going to turn around turns around. And, and I hear the Lord say, Steve, did he really want to waste the whole week worrying about this? And I went, okay, God, I think that that was a sermon there that I probably ought to listen to, you know. And I, and I, I, uh, I confess to you, I had a really bad attitude, and that affected a lot of people, you know. So I had to go up, go ahead, and clean up some messes. That's not always fun, is it? So that so that I can be honest with Dave, his message read as follows: "Lord bless you, brother." I said, "Thanks for your faith in me, Dave." He said, "Ditto." He goes, "Tell the church I love them." See, I lied to you. I'm sorry. So he said again, "Tell them I love them." Um, I don't. Uh, there's very few of you that are new here. If you don't know Dave. Uh, man, an amazing guy. And and I just want to give him honor. Uh, um, one of the things that we're working on in here is creating a culture of honor. And that sounds like a really cool thing, but it's really simple. It is, it is giving honor where it is deserved. And uh, your pastor is a true pastor at heart. That's who he is. That's, and you just don't find anything else. That's who he is. 
and I just want to share that with you. I thank Dave for this awesome uh, uh, opportunity. I thank you folks for being here with me. Um, there may be a little more humor sometime during this morning. I can't guarantee it. But uh, I got some material that we will go through. And then I got a little surprise for you at the end. Um, so, so one of the things, uh, and I'm just going to put this out there right now, and then we'll see what the Lord does with this throughout the service. Uh, I gave you one of the words the Lord gave gave, for me, uh, gave me this week, which was that someone was deeply hurting inside. Another one was someone's got a problem with the fingers, I believe, on their right hand. And I don't know who that is, but uh, if that's you, uh, we have one right there. I, I have no idea. So that's two. So a- after service, uh, I, I want my prayer team to in place and... and our prayer team. <laughs> anyway, and and we will will cover that in prayer. Okay. Um. So today, specifically, I'm going to take you through a set of scriptures and a set of actions that I think are quite amazing. And. Uh, God was so good to give this to me whilst I was being an idiot. (laughs) So, if we could begin the outline, we're going to go through this outline. It won't take us hopefully too long, and then we're going to do a couple more items. Reasonable act of worship. And they know where that comes from? Romans 12. I beseech you, brothers, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, which is your reasonable act of service or worship. You can say that either way. I like my subtitle of this, though, How to Transform Society in Four Steps. Originally, when I wrote it, I wrote four easy steps. The Lord said, you better take that word easy right out of there. I said, Lord. He said, I don't want you to lie. You'd have to confess again. So so he took it out of there. Let's go to step one. Step one. Confess all sin. Make amends to everyone for any wrong done. All right. That's step one. The other thing I wanted to do in the introduction is I wanted to say that the other thing I was tempted to say, first I was tempted to say four easy steps. Then I thought about it and I was going to say four impossible steps, which was probably closer to the truth. But it's not impossible with the Holy Spirit. Confess all sin and make amends for wrongs done. Let's turn to James 5, 13 through 16. Is anyone among you in trouble? Oh, oh, by the way, before I read this, before I read this, James here is just telling you, do what is appropriate in the moment. That's what he's saying here. This whole thing is about doing what is appropriate in the moment. If anyone among you is troubled, let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. If anyone among you is sick, let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have committed any sins, they will be forgiven. The whole thing is for this reason. Therefore, you like that? Whenever you see the word therefore, you always look before it. All right? Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. 
The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So what he's, what he's providing here for us is a very simple solution to a horribly deadly problem. Right? That's a simple solution. 1-800-DIAL-A-FRIEND. Hello? Is this friend? Thank you, friend. Hey, I had an awful attitude, and I puked on some folks. <laughs> and now i got to go back and clean it up. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, you can pray for me. Thank you, brother. Brother prays for you. You're done. Click. Don't take it any further. Don't let that go into a pattern of shame. Because once you're in that that rock tumbler of shame, you ain't getting out until most of you is gone. Right? We 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 can <laughs> we 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 confess, we repent. And, we're, and, and we are clean, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Let's take a look at Matthew 5, 23 and 24. And this is important. This is, this is a very important thing. This is neat. <coughs> Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar... First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Um, how does that translate into our into our vernacular today? If if you're in a worship service and the Holy Spirit hits you and says, uh, "Hey, you messed up this week, and this is what you did," and you go, "Oh yeah," and you can get a hold of the person. Do you think you ought to keep on worshiping and just ignore that? No, man. Step out and take care of it. Step out and get it done with, right? Same process we just talked about. You know? I mean, hey, Chris, I'm really sorry that the other day I told somebody that you didn't know how to drum for anything. Do you think you can forgive me? Okay, that's good. It's easy to pick on Chris. <laughs> he always does what you want him to. It's just <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> And man, can he play those drums. I like that little drum solo at the end. Should have taken another five minutes of that. <laughs> In other words, make amends. Get it taken care of. I don't care what it takes. Get it taken care of. The other day we were, I had a situation where something was going wrong with something we were doing in the backyard, and man, it got a little testy with everybody, you know? It's the stupid backyard, Steve. What are you doing? Hello? It's like the Holy Spirit saying to me, Steve, remember, you know, there's that end of the world thing where... There's the whole fire deal, and then, like, the earth does the whole melty, melty thing, and then I create a whole new heaven and earth. Uh, yeah, Lord. Take a look out there in that backyard. Oh, yeah, looks nice, Lord. It's all going to burn. <laughs> right? And then, and then we worry about it. Here's one I like is, is worrying about money. I love that one. That is the most hilarious thing. 
And it's and it's funnier the older you get. I mean, when I was 30, maybe I could understand, maybe worrying about money. I'm 56. Uh, two more steps and I'm a man up the hill, and I'm in the presence. <laughs> and when I get there, I'm gonna. If I reach for my wallet, I'm not gonna find it. Or if I do find it, I'm gonna open it up, and there ain't gonna be nothing in there. You know. We get kind of funny, don't we? I get kind of funny. You're all mature, I forget. You're all mature. Okay, next. Step two. I don't know if you can read this or not, so I'll read it to you. First of all, under step two, it says, you've got to do this. It'll change your life. Okay, you like that? Quit all habits. Okay, and by the way, this goes right back to what Renda was saying. That was so God this morning, Renda. That was awesome. Thank you for sharing. Quit all habits that might compromise your identity in Christ. Or could make you less confident or might interrupt your intimacy with Jesus. Quit them. Just quit them. While you're quitting them, if you happen to have a problem with that, refer back to rule number one. (laughs) Hey, I got a problem with that. Good, I'll pray for you. Awesome. Right? And when do you give up? When you suck your last breath, then you're done. Until then, you keep working on this stuff. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is at work in you to create a destiny person. He, 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 he wove you together in your mother's womb. He, he bled and died for you. He, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave for you. He rose again for you. He filled you with his Holy Spirit. He put the very same spirit in you that raised Christ from the dead. He put the very same spirit in you that raised Christ from the dead. That's the power that is at work in you this morning. So we don't stop trying. We don't stop moving forward. Paul says, I, I, I sit back and relax knowing that at some point, someday, God's going to take me home to glory and I'll be all right. Okay, no, I'm sorry, that's a lie. He said, I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. If you want to if you want to have a little stress in your life, I recommend that kind of stress. The kind of stress that's caused by saying, can I hold more of the Holy Spirit in my body? Can I more intimately fellowship with Jesus Christ? Can I, can I move forward in my level of obedience? Can I increase my faith? Can I exercise the faith I have now so that it will grow? All right. Yeah, I went from, I don't know, teaching to preaching somewhere there. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, okay, you get to read the next part with me, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Stop there. Go back one. I don't want to miss you. Come on. Thank you. Great job. Way to go.
Let us throw off everything that hinders. Everything that hinders. Everything that hinders. Let me hear you say everything that hinders. Everything that hinders. Somebody is dependent upon you following Christ closer next week than you are this week. I'm not trying to throw guilt on you. I'm just saying, if we can do better, let's do better. Not by our own power, not a fleshly work, but by inviting more of the Holy Spirit to come out in us. Let us throw off everything that hinders. It's time for a garage sale, man. Of course, the problem is the stuff we want to sell, we don't want anybody else to get it either, you know. <laughs> Bonfires. That or else you sell it all back to the demons so they'll destroy themselves. We're talking about habits that just don't have any place in us. But the lie that we're told by Satan is Hey, it's okay. You're free. You, this won't hurt you too bad. Till year, uh, till years from now, when it destroys you and your relationships. How do you how do you let go of the stuff that hinders and entangles? How do you do it? Step two: fix your eyes on Jesus. Right. Set your gaze. Set your gaze. Dear Jesus, help us to set our gaze this morning. Help us to fix our eyes this morning on you because you are the author and perfecter of our faith in the name of Jesus anyone's fingers trying to get healed yet let's go to the next part of this verse for the joy set before Jesus he endured the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Jesus, this is hard. Okay, Steve, I know it's hard. Two things, Steve. Yes, Lord? One. You've been through tougher stuff than this in the past, I guarantee you. But Lord, too, I've been through tougher stuff than this in the past. Oh, yes, Lord, you have. Hey, Lord, you know how to get me through this? Yeah, I do. Awesome, let's talk about that. Right? Step three. When the Holy Spirit asks you, obey right now. Um, how many of you are good or are, are how many of you are really good at obeying instantly? I mean, I'm good, excellent. Who else? Oh, come on, people. I, I, good. One, two. That's good. Good. I, I want to be trained in it. I'm just looking for mentors. That's all. <laughs> You know, we, we raised two of our children, uh, and, and now we're raising two more. And, and 
loving, 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 loving. The funny thing is, they have a hard time obeying instantly too. You ever know? You know, you notice that in your kid, and, and then you get really upset about it. It's like, come on, why can't come when I, you know? And, and, and I love this one. They're, they're like this. Lord, I don't want to break that finger. <laughs> Help me, dear Jesus. <laughs> and, the, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says, "What do you think you do to me most days? <laughs> Give the kid a break. You're 56, and you still don't obey immediately, you know." But we make it sound so spiritual. When we disobey, when we don't obey immediately, right? We really do make it spiritual. Hello? Oh, brother, yeah. Uh, uh, listen, uh, the Lord told me to do this thing. And then you tell him what it is, and then you go, and I, I'm praying about that. Yeah, I, I I like that. Yeah, we want we want you know three fleeces, five confirmations, and two words of prophecy. That's right. And a partridge and a pear tree, exactly. Thank you, Stacy. Good input. The problem is, is that. If we don't obey immediately, somebody misses out again. Thinking about a couple things. Here's one for you. If we just hop back to that Matthew 5 uh, verse again, is there a way to hop backwards? You're so good. Russ, you're amazing. Anyway, therefore, if you're offering your gift the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, think about it for a few weeks, meditate on it, put it on Facebook, <laughs> see how many likes you get. Right? When, when are you supposed to leave your gift at the altar? Now. Now. Now, Lord. It was the funniest period of my life. When I was just a little younger, it was the funniest period of my life. The Lord was telling me to do some things that I thought were really cool, but I didn't think I was capable of them. Let me say that again. The Lord was asking me to do some things that I thought were cool, but I didn't think I was capable of them. So, I just thought, boy, it's really cool that he's asking me. Guess what I started hearing next? Just one word. That was all I kept on hearing it. Guess what it was? Now. 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 Steve, yes? Am I saying it too slow or too fast? Could we talk about what that means, Lord? What's the meaning of now? Second, second example, Ananias and Paul. Ananias is a prophet. Holy Spirit comes to him, says, I want you to go and pray for Saul. Ananias jumped up and said, Lord, I've been waiting to do that. No, not really. I, I like that discussion. That's a really fun discussion, too. It's like, it's like Lord, <laughs> uh -huh. He does bad things to people like me. Christians all over the place. 
Yeah. Aren't you aware of that, Lord? Last example. Let's go to Acts 3, 1 through 8. I'm going to have to really move through this. You know what? You can read this for yourself. I'm going to sum it up. Peter and John, they're on the way to the temple. They're going to worship. They get up to the gate. There's a lame man there. He's been lame since birth. Immediately, he's going to go to the next. Peter looks straight at him. And Peter says, hey, look at us. And the man gave them, gave them his attention. And Peter had to act, not tomorrow, not the next day, right then, in the moment, right? In the moment, in the now. Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but such what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. Act now. You might like the results. Step four. You must make your faith in Christ public knowledge. What do we usually talk about when we talk about making our faith public or making a public statement of our faith? We talk about baptism, right? That's nice. I mean, that's an important step to take. In our case, it happens in a pretty safe place where the park where nobody else is in a heated swimming pool. We baptize you and nobody outside there knows. You know, your boss and your co-workers and Make your faith in Christ a matter of the public record, a matter that everyone knows. Not because you wear a cross on your neck or a fish on your car or that big O symbol on the back of your windshield, which I can only assume means, means omniscient one, but no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, it's not the cross around your neck, it's not the fish on your bumper, it's how you live your life. It's what you say, it's what you do, it's how you touch people, it's how you live. Amen? Those are my four steps. It is my firm abiding unmistakable belief that if you do those four things that if we do those four things we will literally see a revolution in Rockwood and in the city of Portland and it will go on to Oregon and it will probably touch the whole world why do I say that? anybody know? I'll tell you why what I've just given you are the four steps that happened in 19, that, or that were, part, that were the key, the starting point, the starting brick to the 1904-1905 Welsh Revival. At the end of the prayer meeting, when they were getting up to go home, the pastor said, our young brother Evan Roberts ha says he has a word for you. If you care to wait, well, many of them went home, 17 people stayed. Look around. We have more than 17 people. Even if a few of you want to leave. I'm kidding. And Evan 
Roderick began like delivering a telegram. I have a message for you from the Lord. One, you must confess any known sin and put any wrong done to man right again. Number two, you must put away any doubtful habit. Those are what we talked about. Those are the things that entangle you. Those are the things that hinder you. Number three, you must obey the Spirit promptly. And number four, you must confess your faith publicly. Those became the four points of the Welsh Revival. All 17 remaining individuals responded. A newspaper reporter who wrote of the meeting a few days later said when the meeting closed at 4.25 a.m. in the morning, that is, they didn't want to go home. Didn't you hear Robert Coleman say that that's what it's like in Asbury College? But could you imagine a whole country like that? It was phenomenal. The reports were in every newspaper in the Western world. No, not only were 100,000 people converted, but the social impact was astounding. Five years later, the number who remained in fellowship was 82.5%, which was astounding. But as I say, the social impact was even more amazing. In some places, the police were unemployed. Father, we want to make a change in our world, but we need your help, the help of the Holy Spirit. Father, we submit to you. We do not know how to do this on our own. We need you. So, Lord, guide us and help us accept instantly the guidance that you've already given us. 